I almost didn't make it here. I had a, uh, a small apartment fire in Chicago. Yeah. I was having a gender reveal party for my cat, and uh, it all worked out. She's a girl, it's all good, but uh, Chicago's on fire again, so it's, uh, it's bad news, but we're here, we're doing it. So take it all in. I'm five foot three and a half, five foot four if I'm on the dating apps, and uh, this is all I got here. I look like a nice guy with my glasses on, don't I, right? Yeah? Look like I could help you with your financial portfolio, right? Glasses off, I just look like a dirtbag from New Jersey, which is kind of where I'm from, you know, so. Glasses on, offshore accounts, glasses off, Jersey Shore. So, you know, that's how I roll. I roll deep, so. It's good to be here, man. I've only been to Utah one time, so I don't know much about it. I just know, statistically, there are more men. That's all I know, a lot more, more men. Um, went over some of your heads, it's fine. It's early. You'll get there. Drink some more Coke Zero, we'll be good. You guys are slow, it's good. I got Ritalin in the back if you need any for the late show, if you're sticking around, so. I took a Ritalin right before this and I cleaned the whole hotel. It wasn't even my, wasn't even my hotel room, it was my neighbor next to me. I'm like, your room is now organized, you're welcome. And so, last week I took Adderall and I built a house for Habitat for Humanity in one hour. So I am just doing the work out here, so. I live in Chicago, Chicago's great, um, sort of. Um, it's. Um, it's getting a little violent, dangerous, bad. The uh, newscasters are really insensitive now, you know? I, mean, I watched the news the other day, it's like, uh, a man is shot in cold blood on the south side, story 11. Speaking of cold, looks like we had another cold front coming through here, Bob. I'm like, what? that was just a human life that you just skimmed like a leaf in a pool. What was that about, pal? Come on, take some sensitivity training, but no. Good to be here, man. This is my second special this year, so this is great. Um, yeah, thank you, thank you, yeah, yeah, great. Very grateful. I'm only about five or six specials short of Jeffrey Dahmer, though, so I'm trying to get on. He's got about six. I don't know how, but he does. <laughs> That's a hack, am I right? You know, he's just getting specials left and right. I'm struggling to pay my bills here, so I don't know. But I don't know if any of you guys watch the special, but I don't. I don't like it. I don't like how they were making it like like we're supposed to feel bad for him. You know, like well, he had a lot of anesthesia from the groinal hernia surgery. You know, his parents neglected him, so. That's why he did what he did. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I'm one of eight kids, big Italian family. Used to play in the shed by myself because I had no friends. Never at any point was I like, you know what? I'm gonna see what biceps taste like. I think I'm gonna try that. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what that tastes like. Not once did that ever like cross my mind, you know? I got put in Facebook jail for a pretty good joke. I said Jeffrey Dahmer was this close to being a millionaire because he would have been the first person to invent Beyond Meat. And that got me, yeah. I got put in the Facebook slammer, yeah, yeah. It was there for like almost a full week. It was terrible, I, you know. I read the Bible twice, I did a lot of pull-ups, and uh, I can say I'm a changed man. So I am no longer a threat to society, so I'm just happy to be here, man. Facebook out defending people. They're killers, it's fine. Um, I have no beef with them at all. So. You got one more cough, then you gotta leave. It's a two cough maximum here at Dry Bar, so. Just trying to protect everybody. It's good to be here, man. I've been trying to stay off Facebook. Facebook's terrible, you know? It's like TJ Maxx. You think there's something there, but it's just a lot of crap. You know, like I was just, there's <laughs> nothing in there, you know? It's like babies, my cat, and she said yes. It's like, come on, man, there's nothing in there. It's like you went to the gym really angry and then left without working out. You're like, Ugh. It's terrible, man. The only time I like Facebook is when old people use it wrong. My uncle, Manny, I'll call him Manny because that's his real name. He, um, he'll post what he thinks is a private message, but then he'll post it as his status update, you know? The other day, he's like, good to see you and the kids. The shrimp gave me diarrhea. Love, Uncle Manny. I'm like, I'm like Uncle Manny, 2,000 people now know you had diarrhea the other night, so better watch what you post, you know? I actually got deleted from a comedian. He didn't like a joke I wrote on Facebook. I'm like, how passive aggressive do you have to be to delete somebody over a joke, right? So be me being me, I was like, what's something more passive aggressive that I can do? So I re-added him as a friend. <laughs> he didn't know what to do. There was like this weird 24 hour holding period. And then he accepted the friend request back. So I waited 24 hours and then I deleted him. I'm like, that's how you take the power back. <laughs> 
I can be petty, Tom Petty, if you will. Um, oh, it's great, man. Facebook's scary, the whole world's scary right now. That's why I watch, I just watch scary movies year round, you know? And none of them hold up, you know? Like, I know what you did last summer. It's like, yeah, we all know what you did last summer. You put it on Instagram. We saw every single thing that you did. <laughs> or you were homesick, we got it, you know? The best is when somebody's posting like 14 travel vacations and then they write like a really sad thing in their story. They're like, guys. I got COVID. <laughs> and we're like, we know. <laughs> like, we saw you when you were doing the cha-cha slide with your uncle, like, on the, on the cruise ship. Like, it was like, it was in the background, like, waiting, like, an entity to come take your taste and smell. Like, ah. <laughs> it's the other one. When a stranger calls. Remember that movie? It's like, did you check the children? A stranger calls. Nobody calls anybody anymore. Everybody texts. You know? You want to scare a millennial to death, call them on the phone. Like, it, it will... <laughs> ruin their life. Everybody's actually getting afraid now. You ever been with somebody and they get a call and they don't recognize the number? They're like, who the heck? Who is calling me? It says maybe Dave. <laughs> Who's maybe Dave? <laughs> and the phone companies play with it like, it may be Dave. We can't be sure. Might be a serial killer. Might be Jeffrey Dahmer. He might be back. But it may be Dave too. We don't know. <laughs> It's like the movie Scream. Remember that beginning scene, the opening scene, when he's like, hello, Sydney, wanna play a game? That movie would have never happened. She would have seen Unknown Caller, block, end of the movie, never would have happened. <laughs> Just call it Screen, your calls. <laughs> you guys are fun. I like that you guys like what you like. You know, and then you're done. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> Let's get going, the Tylenol PM just kicked in. I've gotta go. I gotta go to the bathroom, but I don't want to get up. I'm afraid he might say something about me. So I'm gonna hold in the nachos that I had before this. You guys are fun, man. I am 45. I know I look great. Um, I, I do identify as 27 years old, though, if anybody's looking. Um, I, my pronouns are he, hmm. <laughs> He's a man, I couldn't tell. <laughs> Like, when I shop, I can shop in the men's section and the boys' section at Target. Like, I think I'm gonna call myself non-binary. I don't know if that's a term I can use, but I'm gonna use that. It's my term. I found out I was old this week uh, when I took the bus in Chicago. The bus driver, without me even asking, lowered the platform down for me. I'm like, oh, I felt really good about that. <laughs> I don't know how they know. You know, they just know. He's like, boop, 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 boop. I'm like, okay, I guess he knows I got a bad right knee and I gotta get on here. Going through menopause, I'm going through the change. I gotta do this, you know? <laughs> Doing like old man things too. I signed up for Bed Bath & Beyond mobile alerts. I'm like, what am I, 97 years old? I got a text at two o'clock in the morning the other day. It said, you up. I was so excited. I thought it was a booty text. It was from Bed Bath & Beyond. It said, you up for 20% off. I'm like, what do I do with that? <laughs> going like a late night booty run for sheets? I have no idea. I shushed somebody at the movie theater the other day. I was like, shh. He's like, what's your problem? It's the previews. I was like, this is a preview of what's to come. So pipe down, Chachi, okay? I don't know why I called him Chachi. He's never seen Happy Days. He was like 11, so. It's terrible, man. It's like, it's subtle though, you know? Like when you're at your back when you're younger, someone's like, what did you do your back? Like I was playing football. You turn 40, someone's like, what did you do your back? Like I was, I was just watching football. Like I just bent down to get the remote and I was like, ooh, my back. <laughs> That's why I want to open up a store called Forever 41, right? There's no clothes. It's just a place you can stop and take a little rest for a little while. Like, that would be, that would be my jam. Yeah. You can't eat anything, they don't tell you that. Remember that adage, liquor before beer in the clear, beer before liquor, never slicker? There needs to be a new one. Like, if you eat anything past 9 p.m. and you're over 40, you may as well just call 911. Like, I had a jalapeno popper the other day. I was hungover for two weeks. I, I went to the hospital. I was like, I need a ventilator. She's like, sir, you don't have COVID. I'm like, ma'am, I took Pepto earlier. There's a fart stuck right here. I cannot breathe. I need a ventilator now. She's like, you're not getting one. So now I'm in a lawsuit with the hospital in Chicago. It's fine, it's all gonna work out, but yeah. It's terrible, man. That's why I, like, I've come up with like a foolproof plan for how to recover when you turn 40. So for every hour you stay out past midnight, you need that many days to recover, right? So it's one o'clock, it's one day, two o'clock, two days, three o'clock, three days, four o'clock, four days. If you're staying out till like five or 6 a.m., you probably do cocaine, so it doesn't really apply to you, you know? You're just like, I'm gonna forget Uber. I'm gonna run to work. <laughs> just flying down the road.